Sit down, darling. Let's talk design. I'm design historian Eleanor Schrader. And I'm Ian Patrick, interior designer. So this is the reason why maybe it's not a good idea to inherit the throne and maybe an election is better because poor Louis XVI and his wife Marie Antoinette were not the most suited to the throne. Right, they were really young, they were very inexperienced. Yeah. Marie spent, I think, most of her reign mm -hmm. very, very sheltered from mm -hmm. the real world situation outside of the palace gates. And Louis was just ill-suited right. to rule. He was still very, very young. He just was very socially awkward. He wasn't exactly, the. he wasn't his great-great-grandfather. He wasn't right. a, a, a political leader. Right, and you know, he was such a bumbling king mm -hmm. that the furniture, they had to round off the corners because he kept hitting himself on the corner. And so that's why there's actually two kinds of, of neoclassical furniture. As you say, there's the butch and there's mm -hmm. the fay. So there's the very Marie Antoinette-ish furniture. Always the straight leg because Pompey and Herculaneum had been discovered a few years before they took over the throne in 1774. And everything neoclassical comes back again. Mm -hmm. So there's the very pretty little Marie Antoinette furniture, and then there's the much heavier, stronger neoclassical furniture. Mm -hmm. And and also the French Rococo, towards the end of it, had come under a huge amount of criticism from political commentators and from philosophers and writers. Even Voltaire criticized the Rococo for being too frivolous, too feminine, too over the top. And the rise of the French neoclassic style was a reaction to that. It was a way to convey that the crown was very serious mm -hmm. about the job they were doing. So the furniture became much more rigid. It became more formal than the very frivolous right. French Rococo. And Marie Antoinette really tried to get to know her people, but it was really misunderstood. She had a little hamlet mm -hmm. out by Petit Trianon and very charming little Hamlet where she played Little Bo Peep thinking that she was getting to know her people, her peasants, but they really took that wrong. Right. And the there were some horrible puppet shows about her. Mm -hmm. A great movie to watch is uh, Jefferson in Paris, which has one of these little puppet shows which is making horrible fun of Marie Antoinette mm -hmm. as this big old whore. Right. She words. really was public enemy number one. Yes. I mean, she was a foreigner, she was a child, she was disconnected. Um, from the the tr real troubles of the real world. And it wasn't just troubles in France. Louis XVI spent quite a bit of government money, money funding the U.S. Revolution. So yes. it was going in to as help us establish our independence while depleting their yeah. coffers. And also it was a great way for them to get a jab in towards England mm -hmm. because they were bankrolling us in our fight for independence. And Marie's Hamlet really was kind of the worst possible thing you could ever do. Uh, but it was quite charming for this little girl from Austria who didn't really want to be the queen to go out into a pasture and pick up eggs laid by royal hens and put them in a silver milk pail and trot off to mm -hmm. the royal dairy where all her cows are perfectly healthy, not dead or emaciated, and they're decorated with flower garlands and little satin ribbons and she goes and plays farmer with her girlfriends. So after 200 years of the monarchy spending that much money furnishing the palaces, you know, finally everybody had enough and in mm -hmm. 1789 this all erupts. And did you know that there was so much French furniture that they wanted to get rid of in the revolution that there was an auction that went on for 365 days. Mm -hmm. And do you know who bought most of it? The English. That's right. Yeah and they want it back now. Mm -hmm. So there's still a little issue between the French right. and the English. Mm -hmm.